Okay, we are recording. All right. When last we left off, the wolf pack, after claiming the arcane airship known as the Misty Step as a prize after the rebellion in Yord, managed to slay its lich-like captain, Forden Darkwater, a.k.a. the Traveler, within his phylactery, destroying him forever. In the wake of this victory, time was spent celebrating their achievements, ordering some arcane items and crew members, as well as practicing the operation of their new vessel while preparing to journey eastwards to Elvanon. On the final day of their preparation, the pack encountered a sight the likes of which none of them had ever seen. In retaliation for the killing of the Traveler, his former comrade, the Torch, claimed the lives of an entire village, scorching them down to nothing more than ash and slag. In the horror, he left an effigy to his comrade, signaling to the pack that this was done in revenge of their actions, and not as an official act of war. After smashing the effigy and honoring those slain, the pack returned to Krillaria in solemn silence, but with renewed determination to see the torch quenched for good. And that is where we're picking things up. You guys are on your way back. It is in the afternoon, late afternoon, going towards evening. Uh, all of you are on the ship. Garuk, this entire time, you, you took a beating in the fight with Forden. Uh, you, were, you were not doing great. You had a little bit of time up in Adam. Uh, you, got, you found out through a messenger that uh, your companions had ordered some items from the artificers uh, under the voiceless, and you got your order in as well. I already, in fact, I already marked the gold off your sheet for it. So okay. if you if your pockets feel a little lighter, uh, you paid the same price as everyone else, uh, which I think they rolled for. So there you go. All right. Um, but you're on the ship. You're waking up from a nap uh, as the ship itself is coming back into its original kind of mooring spot you've been using outside of uh, the entrance to Krillaria with Captain. Finn, wearing his hat and being not only proficient in the use of this ship, but fully trained with expertise. You no longer have to roll for landings unless under combat conditions. Got the fucking seat reclined. Steering with one finger. Finn, you should be careful. Shh. Oh, there's okay. a seat. And it's and it's Captain Finn. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. Oh. Great. The power's gone to his head already. So we're doing that, I see. <laughs> we're sky pirates. Hey, if one of you guys would have learned how to fly the ship, you'd have been the captain. That's true. Mash cut to almost all to. of you learning how to do it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, um I pretty I'll much know how to cannon. fly the ship. But you guys come into your mooring spot. Uh, Finn takes it in without any issue at all. Um, you guys have already kind of knocked down the tops of the trees nearby with some earlier attempts at doing this. So no obstacles whatsoever. You're able to land the ship essentially on the ground. It's hovering just a little bit with enough ballast to hold it down. Um, and as you come out, there is a runner, a wood elf soldier, who uh, it seems to be waiting for you guys to disembark um, as you do. They just look up at you. Uh, Wolf Pack, um, we, I was told to let you know, uh, Lord Dexterian has all of your items ready. Uh, they're prepared and ready for you to pick up whenever you're available. Wait. Oh, good. And with that, the Wood Elf takes off. So you guys are left to your devices. So, Wolf Pack, as it's, the sun's starting to go down and the light in the trees is getting a little dimmer. What would you like to do? I assume we're gonna go pick up. We gotta go pick up our shit, right? Yeah, we gotta go, go pick up our stuff. Huh? Well, shouldn't we probably report in about? Was Krillaria the village? No, Krillaria is the kind of home base in deep in the mountains. Okay, that's the uh, yeah. the voiceless. Okay, yeah. You don't know if the village had a name or not. There was nothing posted, and obviously no survivors. And we have not reported this, correct? Correct. You, uh, yeah, okay. you haven't made it back to Krillaria just yet. Uh, and in fact, mm -hmm. Garuk, this is the first you're hearing about a village. Oh, yeah, well, you were napped out. The torch apparently got pissed because we murked the fucking half-orc. <clears throat> so he burned down a village full of people, oh. including the people. Okay, so is there a tantrum? Yep. Do you know any, like... Imperial like garrisons around here. Who are you asking that? Me or 
anybody like in the party like Grook. Uh, mm. I guess Grook we can just has, ask when we get to the base. I'd say Grook has a little bit of knowledge just because of some unta- or untapped plot threads that she's holding on to. Um, there is technically a legion to the northwest of Oakland uh, that hasn't been spotted in a while. Other than that, you guys know it's probably like most of the legions are based in the major cities and they're not camping out in villages or anything like that. They're sticking to where they're safe, essentially, and only going out for expeditions. So I think it's time we make that feeling of safety feel a little less so. We have Kevin. we should we should yeah, we should find some of those and just bomb the shit out of them. <clears throat> Whatever we ordered. That sounds like fun, though. Oh, yeah, you haven't gotten to fuck with the guns yet. Mm-mm. They make big booms. Should Tez show you what's up? Can we fire Tez out of one of them? Oh, um... No, Garuk. That's no. not how it works. I mean, you could, but not... Intact? Yeah. It would blow me to pieces. All right, so what are you guys doing? I just head for Krillaria. All right, you guys head into Krillaria, uh, bypassing the security checkpoint. At this point, everybody kind of knows it's you, and you're not necessarily making, like, you're not trying to stealth in like you were the very first time. Like, you know, they, they know you. So you enter. Uh, Krillaria itself, it's starting to get pretty dark, so a lot of the moss and the mushrooms that light up this place after hours are already lit. Uh, you do see some lights from the command tent where Coral Red Fire would be found, uh, and you also see the staircase leading down to the artificers. Well, there's light in the command tent, so I said we go report in first, right? Yeah, we got to go report. All right, you guys head over to the command tent. Uh, not a whole lot of staff at this point in the day. A um, couple of assistants just kind of going over some paperwork, intelligence, it looks like. Uh, your father is, for lack of a better term, burning the midnight candle. Uh, looks to be sitting at his desk going over some other reports. Uh, one seems to be in this very like heavy, le- you know, heavy-duty scroll um, with, interestingly, an imperial symbol on one end of it, uh, kind of hanging off of it like a keychain. But he looks up as you guys enter. Oh, uh, back so soon. Uh, how did the preparation with the ship go? Oh, it went well. Got the ship handled. Good, good. It'll be a uh, worthy resource to use. I don't think they were expecting us to take something so powerful from them. Yes. Yeah. Of that. Not great news. Oh, no. Not good news at all, actually. How bad? Well, um, entire village bad. You see, he kind of like chokes up a little bit. Um, you guys have, I mean, you, the twins have spent enough time around their dad. You're, you've never really seen him like break into emotion or anything like that. Um, and this isn't necessarily him breaking, you know, breaking down crying or anything like that, but you do see he's choked something back. Um, he seems a little more invested in this fight than anything you've ever seen him be invested in, uh, in your time knowing him. So finding out that this cause that he's serving got some people killed, uh, he definitely kind of not necessarily cough or anything, just there's a stop in his breath for a second. And with your passive perceptions, you'd pick up on that. Kind of looks down at his report, sets it down. Any survivors? No, that we no. can tell. Any sign of it? It was the it? torch. Yeah, he seemed thorough. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, that's and he points at the scroll. That's exactly what we're finding out. Uh, he, I guess, sometime in the last twenty-four to forty-eight hours, he wiped out a settlement up in the Verdant Bay Peninsula, past Elvanon said he found a group of druids out there that were uh, gathering resources was what was listed in the report. So 
who knows what that means exactly, but. How long would it take to fly there? We could go there and I could smash his head with my hammer. Well, uh, I'd be very careful doing that. Um, the torch is, you guys have had some experience dealing with mages. I mean, you, you know, we have our own uh, arcanist here. Like one of the highest ranks a mage can get within the empire. The torch doesn't really fit on any of those scales. He is unchecked power in its worst form. So if you're planning on hunting him down and engaging him for this, I'd be very careful and very prepared. I don't think it's impossible, given that you already took down the Traveler. But this isn't going to be a fight you can just waltz into, guns blazing immediately. There's going to be some prep for it. That's not good. And, that seems like the only way we fight. Yeah, that's what I kind of gathered based on what's been going on. So, again, I'm... And he looks at the twins especially, but kind of takes all of you in. I, you guys aren't my soldiers. You're allied with me, technically, but I, you don't have to follow my commands. I'm not ordering you to avoid him. I'm just advising caution. And he locks eyes and kind of flits between the twins a little bit as he says this. This man is, for all intents and purposes, one of the strongest mages in the Empire. And from what we know, hand-trained by the man who killed your father. If there was ever going to be a, for an arcane power in this world capable of rivaling your main quarry, it would be him. So just be safe. Yeah, that's like... the plan. Mark him in the sleep or something. Or like poison him. If you find a way to get to him in his sleep, be my guest. Well, uh, the party we threw here when you killed the Traveler will be exponentially bigger. We find out the Torch has been murdered in any way, shape, or form. Oh. Speaking of, do you have any like locations on any like Imperial camps up here around the Redwood Forest? Um, go, go I was thinking about roll, maybe like paying back. Go ahead and for... roll a persuasion check. Uh, Toral's got a pretty high passive insight, and it's not hard to connect the dots that you're going towards. So, 15. I can think of at least one. You've made it kind of clear you're heading towards Elvanon soon, right? Yeah. I do know of a legion that would be patrolling the road. Uh, whether or not there will be any civilian casualties involved there, I can't say. But check around, and he marks, uh, he kind of like shows you the big table map, uh, and he marks this coordinate spot, kind of a bend in the road uh, between Oakland and Elvanon. Check around there tomorrow. Uh, the report I had said a legion left about a day or two ago from Elvanon heading to reinforce Oakland, so based on the normal marching time and the fact that there's probably only one ranger with them, they'd be about there. Nice. Just be careful. We, uh, we already have kind of a bad rep. We're always, We're careful. always careful. Oh, yeah. that's what I said. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> Careful's our middle name. <laughs> he, Jeez, at that, at that he's your name to the careful pack. He, he definitely laughs at that. Like, fair enough. Yes, that's definitely what you are known for. But uh, I'm just checking the group. Mm, mm hmm. Yep. You, you see, he like surreptitiously hides a report with uh, the words Oakland written on the top of it in big red letters, just slides it underneath the rest of his paperwork. Like, yep, careful. <laughs> Let's forget about that. But uh, yeah, so. If you're looking for a little payback, that might be where you can look. Uh, I, I don't want to keep saying it because that feels weird at this point, but where trouble alights in the Redwood Forest, the legions aren't too far behind to investigate. So if you're going to burn something, burn it and run. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh we're good at we that. Got... And definitely hide the ship if you guys go near Elvanon. They won't exactly be looking for an airship, but... If anyone sees it, they're, I mean, they're not a common thing. I can think of only two in existence. 
So maybe hide it. Oh, we're going to have a crew, so yeah. we'll probably keep them up in the air. That's yeah. true. Yeah, we'll park uh, it speak, speaking of which, I actually, and he goes and pulls another piece of paper out, uh, I have the crew drafted. Uh, I was only told you wanted one carpenter, one deckhand, one bosun, and two stewards. Is that all? Or any? do we need to find any others before you depart in the morning? Uh, we said somebody that could cook, right? Stewards can do that, yeah. They're... Essentially, they do a lot of the cooking, cleaning, uh, general maintenance. So, I mean, that seems like all we need. Yeah, it seems. Did, like did we need? Yeah. Did we need somebody to make bombs, or can we do that? Uh, I don't know if any of you looked into that. Um, you technically have a manual for everything involving the gun, so you could do a little research on that. But uh, Toral just kind of thinks for a second. We have someone. An art, well, we have an artificer that could probably figure it out if you're wanting to just delegate that. I mean, we know how to do it. Like, we got the instructions. I'm just saying, if we need to, do we need to get somebody like, can the stewards help make bombs too? If you had someone well trained on them, probably, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. I, wouldn't tr I wouldn't trust them to learn it on their own. They're, bre they're better under direction. That's fair. But uh, if that's all you're needing, just the bosun, the stewards, deckhand, and carpenter, I'll have them meet you out in the ship tomorrow morning, first thing. Oh, Willem, Janie, and Gary can help, too. Oh, yeah, with those three little fucking... Maybe not Jerry. Jerry's but the other two. <laughs> maybe we don't want Jerry making bombs. <laughs> Probably I'm, not, no. Let's I'm just accept it. Lay, though. I mean, Where he has been he? depleting some of our stores. Oh, no. That's actually, that's actually a good question. Where is he? Jerry. He's been eating and drinking everything. Well, that little fuck. That checks out. We really I mean, he's, one, Jerry he's one halfling. He, he's one halfling. How much can he really eat and drink? Oh. <laughs> well, he can really put him away a lot. Oh, that, that doesn't bode well, then. I mean, he's making places run out of their alcohol, as it is. It's true. <laughs> I should probably order a general inventory once you guys leave. Probably, probably not. I might, I idea. might not want to do that. He has a real yeah. problem. <laughs> well, in that case, I hope you find some use for him on your ship that doesn't eat you guys dry. I'll take care of Jerry. Don't worry. Fair enough. So Tez is watching him. He does fine. Mm hmm. But I think. Kind of looks down at his reports. I don't think I had anything else for you guys. Uh, I think the artificers got done with all of your equipment. Um, and that should all be ready for pickup. Yeah, we'll go get that. And we've got, like, good information, like, when we get to Elvanon, of, like, who we're looking for and that, right? Yes. So, just as a quick, uh, to bring you back up to speed on it. So, an old comrade of mine, uh, back in the Ranger Corps, Belnir Quickfinger, I think the twins might have met him once or twice uh, when they were kids. He was, he actually was a friend of your mother and helped me get assigned to the Ranger Corps when I first enlisted. So, old family friends, uh, I trust him with my life. He was one of the only rangers that, when he found out what I was doing, looked the other way. Um, didn't, he very specifically did not choose to hunt me down, which look, he looks at uh, Taylor for this. That it's something a ranger can probably do in the Redwood. So, having him turn, kind of look away from that was, it helped a lot for me to get away. So, He's wanting to set up a meet with agents. He didn't, I didn't specify who he'd be meeting and what they'd look like or anything like that. Uh, he did want to use an old dead drop method used by some of the ranger elite. Uh, very common for us. He's actually a master of infiltration and reconnaissance. So the advice for the dead drop is whatever inn that you're staying at, go to the shop across the street or find a sewer near that at least, uh, near that inn. 
drop a note with a piece of silver tied to it with the information for the shop, uh, a shop across the street from the inn you're staying in. He'll get in contact with you then. Okay. That's easy enough. Like I said, it's an old method. Uh, <clears throat> should be pretty easy to get in contact with him from that point. So I don't know exactly what he'll have for you uh, as far as you know, intelligence or what exactly he's wanting. He just said that the mood in Elvenon is starting to change. And I mean, that seemed like a big enough step in the right direction to warrant an investigation at the very least. Oh, I'm sure there's something for us. I will advise, he looks at the twins for this, probably stay away from home. And if you can help it, stay away from East Wall. There, I mean, it was the only kind of place that we really knew about, or that knew about you, at the very least, because, you know, you know how Elvenon is. So, if anyone is going to recognize you or me, they, or any relation to me, any facial features we share, it'll be there. So, just be careful. Uh, I'm saying that. I'm so sorry. You guys are more than capable, but you're heading into the lion's den. So. Oh, I'm a lion! You know, you are, and I should have used a different word. I'm, I apologize for that. I'll feel right at home. Maybe, maybe don't. Uh, I wouldn't advise that. Um, you, you, you know, I want you to have a good time there, and I can't guarantee that because of just how the people are. So, You told us that we could kill as long as we ran after. That's easy. When ambushing someone. Oh, yeah. That's on the way. Um, yeah. yeah, that's... If, I wouldn't advise going into Elvenon and just wanton murdering everybody. Um, that might okay. have the opposite effect of what we're trying to do. I'll ask Finn first. You know, that's... Yeah, I'm gonna... Finn seems like a very good judge of character at this point, so... Or, or Garouk. I'll ask you, Garouk. That seems less... I, that seems like a step in the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm going to ask her instead. <laughs> he, he, looks, he looks at you two, the twins, and says, can you, you know... Yeah, yeah. We will. Thank you. Oh, and if anyone does capture any of you, you don't know me, you don't know my organization. That's I don't easy. Know what you're talking about. Who Just are like you? I taught, or taught you. Yeah, I don't see the resemblance. <laughs> Some probably wouldn't. But have, well, I was going to say have fun, but that seems weird considering where you're going and why so I didn't we're gonna have more fun the than the empire so, you know i don't doubt that so be productive i guess it's, that seems like a better option than either <laughs> of the other two i was gonna say is this weird i feel like i'm being weird about this now nah you're fine okay to productivity and i just leave he like stops with a smile on his face to productivity and with that you guys walk away I'm assuming you're heading down to the artificers uh, down in the, the not dungeon time to get our shit alright you head down there and Dexterian is actually just finishing up a different piece of enchantment work and he just kind of looks up pops up his mask oh so got my message good uh, here's what I got for you and he goes and leads you over to a table. Each of your items, uh, just as you had given it, have now been enchanted with a little placard that has your name on it. And for the purposes of this, where did I have the list? So, okay. Finn, you gave a ring, correct? Yes. You now have a ring of force resistance. But on top of that, uh, this ring, because it's specially enchanted, does not require attunement. I think the real one does. So oh, if you cool. add that to roll 20, nice. it is attunement free. Sweet. Uh, so are all of your items for the record, because you all went with a custom enchanter instead of just buying them off the rack. So those of you that gave cloaks, which I think are the twins and Baruk, all of you now have the cloak of protection. Woohoo! Uh, still sans attunement, and for the giant Tez, you get something special. You get this belt of defense, which doesn't act officially exist in 5e, so 
you're going to use bracers of defense and just rename it to a belt because I think it's stupid that there isn't a belt that also does that. That's perfect. Yes. Very nice. Thank very, you. Uh, that seems, it seems like a very simple <laughs> enchantment, and I mean, a belt is really just a bracer for your waist, so. Perfect. But you all have those. Uh, you get the effects without being attuned to them, so congratulations. Most of you just went up in armor class or some kind of resistance. Hell yeah. Making you even harder to kill and meaning my encounters are going to need to get harder. That's oh, fine. What? What? No woo that time? <laughs> woo! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, woo. after that last fight, I think we're good. You know, that's fair. That's, <laughs> that's fair. I, I think oh, we're no, about breaking I... even. We've had some epic <laughs> fights, and then we've had some yeah. really close calls. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you guys legit have had one hit point left. I think yeah, a couple when... of you, like a couple of you, were down, and others were three not looking were great. Down. Two yeah, were down. Two were up. No one was in double digits. Point you, you, it was... I'm very, I'm very glad I worked in that mechanic for you guys <clears throat> to push, push the buttons because that fight. Yeah. I don't. If you guys hadn't been literally psychologically torturing him while inside of his own like essence, I don't know if that fight would have gone as well as it probably did. So I mean, it it came down to everybody wanting to stay, and it, that almost that's true. cost us. But at the same time, it was it was either going to be he goes down or we all do, and it literally roll of the dice was in our yep. favor for that time. Exactly, that happened again. So just remember that, guys. <laughs> Fair, but all right, you have all your items. Uh, it is now kind of mid mid to late evening by the time you got done with checking in and everything. So. Uh, Dexterian kind of, you know, lets you guys leave the foundry so that he can get back to work, and the rest of the night is yours. And if you guys have anything you want to accomplish before setting out for the morning? Nope, not me. Can't think of anything. I'm gonna take. Yep, I'm gonna take that silence as a big fat nope. So we will transition over to in the middle of the night. As someone has recently oh, attuned to a very powerful artifact, Finn. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. An, an endless expanse of knee-deep water surrounds you. There are no beaches, there are no tides, but you hear the gentle sound of waves all around you. You feel nothing but a general sense of calm seas and peaceful sailing. In the back of your mind, you hear an unfamiliar voice that somehow bears just a tinge of familiarity as it speaks into the back of your mind. The voice states, You now carry a piece of me with you, my champion. The one known as the Traveler that sealed much of my gifted power within the binds of his pact to another dark being. With his death is my release and my ability to empower you in my name. For once, I can only manifest true sentience within my well. Henceforth, you can speak my name and call upon my advice, my assistance, my wisdom. Continue to seek artifacts of my power, and soon we will be able to confront the darkness on the horizon. Then do you react in any way? Um. Yeah, I mean, fuck yeah, let's do it. I'm you ready. Feel a, you feel a sense of confirmation in your head. And you are, you open your eyes. You no longer hear the sound of the tides. Although just, maybe just faintly. As you lay in your bed in an underground cave. Somewhere far away, you are hearing the sound of the ocean as you are barely awake before drifting back off to sleep like a sailor on the tides. The next morning, you all awaken. You all have the benefits of a long rest if you needed it. You're all in tip-top shape. Gather your things. You head out to where the Misty Step is parked, and you find a small group of... Uh, mis mismatched individuals. None of them look like they necessarily should be here. Uh, none of them are dressed like soldiers. They're all kind of dressed mostly in commoner garb. 
Uh, although the two gnomes that you see are wearing aprons, oddly enough. Uh, there's a dwarf with kind of a bald head, uh, shaggy beard that appears to be very well braided in spots. Comes up to you. Aye, so uh, you're the new masters of the Misty Step. Is that right? We're supposed to be serving under you? Correct. Oh. Right. Right. Well, my name is Rulo. I'll be your new bosun. And I'm looking forward to taking orders from you. Uh, is there a captain among ye? Um, as far as silence general... is telling. Captain Finn, Sparrow. As far as general orders go, no, we're all captains. But when it comes to like flying the ship, that's me. He looks at the hat and is just like, I'm just going to, whoever's wearing the hat that day, if it comes to ship stuff, I'm just going to listen to him. If that's all right with the rest of you, no offense. But he, he does have, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, good to meet you, Captain Finn. He holds a hand out to shake. Shake's hand. I don't know exactly how uh, experienced you are with the crew and operating of this vessel. I've been led to believe it's very uh, intuitive, but I'm looking forward to helping you out in any way possible. Do you know, uh, just to gauge kind of familiarity, do you know what my position exactly is? Do you know what a bosun does? Hey, really? Because I, I don't. I, I believe I don't. we told last time we played, and we've probably all forgotten since then. I can't remember if I told you or not. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you did. <laughs> I, I, I might I might have given you like I, I I think I did give you like the TLDR. So yeah. the TLDR again is essentially the bosun does literally everything. He is your right hand. If you didn't have a first mate, he would be the first mate essentially. Uh, he's in charge of making sure that the ship is in tip top shape. The rest of the crew are operating at peak efficiency, uh, making sure that if there's anything you guys personally need uh, as far as getting things done on the ship, he's there to try and assist you. So he is. Your personal assistant crank to 11. Perfect. Oh, good. What was his name again? Uh, Rulo, which is R O. I will put it in the chat. That'll be easy, actually. Uh, Rulo the door. Rulo, if you, if you need any oh. help, my hobbits can help too. Jerry's over there. He oh, can you've do got anything. a couple of. You've got a couple of half and he looks over and he sees he locks eyes with Jerry and Jerry immediately like eyes down and like Oh I, I know at least one of them. Oh tell no. me, uh, has he has he always been ba- that bad at cards? Oh Jerry, did you lose money to this man? This dwarf. Maybe. You see he's also missing a shoe. That's my money. <laughs> Sorry. And you see Rulo go, goes into his pack, pulls out a, the other shoe that Jerry apparently doesn't have. You know, to be fair, I didn't even take this from you. You just kind of left it on the table, and I was like, please don't. That's unsanitary, but uh, sign of good faith working with you, Jerry. And he gives the shoe back. Jerry, Jerry just kind of... those shoes uh, on your feet. Yes, sir. The other two like halflings have taken a step back to try and stay out of the way of everything. Like, not, we're not getting in the middle of this. It's all right, though. For the best. He, I mean, he won't be the only troublemaker on the ship. Is that right, Dreenan and Drell? And you see the two gnomes kind of pipe their heads up. They've kind of been conspiring with themselves, looking at something. Uh, and they both kind of come up. Uh, dark skinned gnomes, uh, kind of just shock of black hair, really unremarkable, like almost borderline rock gnome or deep gnome, uh, but still kind of keeping the forest vibe to them. Uh, wearing aprons and some weird looking little chef hats. Uh, kind of a weird cross between almost like if you've ever seen like the old fast food restaurant hats, like the paper ones, almost like that. Uh, the two notes awesome. go, Yeah, hi, uh, my name's Dreenan, and the other one immediately chimes in, and I'm Drill. Uh, we'll be your stewards for the ship. So, uh, I don't, I don't know like how messy you guys are, but be careful. We don't, we don't like to clean, I'll be honest, but we'll do it. We're getting paid, so I mean. And Drell kind of like smacks Green in as he's been saying that. We'll do our jobs effectively, I promise. Okay. Uh, at that point, a half elf brazenly comes forward in front of the two gnomes. And uh, I'll be assisting anything on the ship itself. My name is Marius, Marius Lachant, at your service. Uh, half elf, very handsome looking, close cropped blonde hair, uh, sun weathered tan. Looks like he would actually fit on a real ship. 
while the others kind of it's a little bit of a mismatch. Like you can almost believe R- Rulo is mainly because of his experience, but Marius looks like he walked straight off of a merchant vessel that he's been working on the entirety of his short life. So he extends his hand as well uh, for someone to shake. He doesn't necessarily point it at anyone in particular. I'll shake it. <clears throat> nice to meet you, m'lady. Uh, I, I start I, to, and fucking Tyler blows past me and shoulders me out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, come now. There's enough of me to go around. Oh. But I'm here to assist with anything on the deck that you need help with, and I do mean anything. Okay. And, kind of, and with that, he winks at Finn. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <clears throat> <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> oh, his passive perception. He saw it all right. Yep. <laughs> Whether he wanted yep. to or not. <laughs> uh, and uh, I guess that makes me the one rounding out the crew. And this uh, big black scale dragonborn comes up, easily standing, like maybe a couple inches shorter than Utez. Like truly oh. massive. Uh, no big. tail. Black, like polished scales all over, except around the hands where they look like they've been kind of worn down just from general working, uh, being you know, weather exposure and things like that. Like, if excuse me, if a dragon board could be calloused, this would be the equivalent. Name's Orleans, I'm uh, supposed to be your carpenter. Welcome nice to board. meet you. Oh, nice you're, to meet you're you. Big, you're almost as big as I am. You're very big as well. I can you respect like that. Good, and he, good he extends carpenter. a fist out. He extends a fist out to fist bump you. I fist bump back. You have that like anime okay. moment of like the two big guys locking eyes, but <laughs> out of admiration. Look at my hammer, and I'll just shove my giant hammer in his face. Can you swing this? You're a carpenter. He he kind of looks at it like, may I? I hand it out. I like to see if he can. It's he takes it huge. and uh, he it is, but he's still able to wield it. And Ooh. he does like a little flourish with it up in the air and looks like he's about to bring it down onto the ground, but stops like an inch before it impacts. Oh, pulls it back. You're up. good with that. It's got some weird heft to it, but it's not too much different than a wood hammer. And he hands it's it back really to you. magical. Thank you. I can sense that. That's why I didn't want to hit anything. Maybe you can come out with me sometime and we can kill something. Do you like to do that? Not necessarily. It's why I got into carpentry. Oh, okay. That's okay. More of a more of a maker than a taker if you catch my drift. That makes sense. Well, maybe some other time. Maybe. <laughs> he just kind of looks at you like, "Cool. Cool. This is this is who I am now." <laughs> this is it. <clears throat> yep. So with uh, all the introductions made, uh, Rulo steps forward again. All right, so uh, if we're all ready, we, we can get you loaded up, and uh, we'll be heading out forthwith. I believe I was told it's uh, Eastern Henry. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. East, yes. <clears throat> all right. He looks at the rest of the group. All right, get your shit on board. Let's get going. Uh, the rest of the crew hops onto the ship with what little belongings they haven't already put on there. They start getting everything situated. And you hear the sounds. It, the rigging and stuff is mostly manual. Like, it's automatic uh, because of the enchantments. But you see that Marius does start doing a couple of manual ones to try and rig him up a little bit more, a little more efficiently that maybe an automatic system wouldn't be able to quite do. So getting everything ready, uh, you guys are able to get situated. And unless you have anything else, you guys are ready to take off. I'm good. We're ready to go. Yeah, yeah I'm ready to go. With that, the Misty Step once again at the helm. Sitting at the helm is Captain Finn Stormraven, of course, taking the ship up to a cruising altitude ever so slowly before clearing the trees and finally gunning it just a little bit to get up there. And you are underway. So, flight time straight to Elvenon or the regions around Elvenon would be. About a day, give or take any bad weather going on. What are you guys planning as far as uh, detours, if any? I mean, what do you guys think? You guys think it's worth blowing up this, like, 
garrison resupply that's headed towards Oakland, or should we just go to Elvedon and not risk like blowing up civilians? I would actually be against retaliation to them because if we do something like that, then the torch could retaliate again and do something even worse than the village. And I, I just don't want to test that to see if he would. Plus, mm. killing civilians would yeah. not be high on my priority list. Yeah, I'm a little torn on it. I could be convinced what if we, either way. What if we scoped it out, and if it looks good, we do it. And if not, and if it looks risky, then we keep going. You know, that's a very good idea. Yeah, I'm smart. I'm shocked well, it came really. out of him. I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm usually not that smart. <laughs> Nah, you're pretty smart. Okay. When you yep. want to be. So yeah, I guess we'll just head that way then. Like, I'm assuming we're flying up like high, so we're not Yeah, you guys are less noticeable. You're you guys are just below like getting a little bit of insight from notes left on the ship uh in the instruction manual about the main cruising altitude, as well as just some knowledge that Tyler herself has, uh, based on what she knows about, you know, flying animals and such. You're aware that there's kind of a limit to how high you guys can go before it gets start. It starts getting really hard to breathe. You guys are just below that. So, up like from down below, anyone that can see you through the trees and any sunlight, because the sun is getting higher and higher in the sky, anyone that can spot you wouldn't be able to spot more than like a general circle or you know some kind of shape up in the sky. Kind of how you guys spotted the eagle uh, on the trip up to the redwoods, like high enough that. There's there's nothing but an indistinct shape. Sweet. All right, but uh, the bosun comes up. So, uh, no detours. I think we're just gonna head towards Elvenon and see what we come across on the way. Right. Well, we should be there before nightfall. Uh, I'm guessing you don't want us to go right into the city proper. No. <clears throat> um. We probably should hide the ship someplace a little like outside of town. Do you have any? Anybody have any experience with the area? I guess Taylor and Tyler, you guys know of anywhere like secluded we can hide the fucking ship? Both of you go ahead and roll a nature check. And actually, Finn, because you have expertise, go ahead and roll an intelligence check. Wow. Hey. Hey, yo. Very nice. All right. Natural 20. Uh, so, yeah. intelligence. I spent too much time up in the woods to the east. So, Well, funny you say that because the thought, like, as you guys are kind of thinking of some spots, um, Finn, you don't come up with any extra ideas uh, as far as hiding this thing or anything like that. Tyler. You come up with two, and one of them you've actually seen written in the book. Uh, the other one is of your own design. So first off, there's a couple of hollows actually just on the opposite side of uh, the Greenwater River, over in technically the Verdant Bay Peninsula. Uh, you and your family uh, spent a lot of time over on that side of the river, just because it's a little more nature-bound. Um, there's no real civilization out there past Elvenon. It was kind of like the refuge for any elves that didn't necessarily want to become city elves. So. You can think of at least a couple of different hollows far enough away from where your homestead was that it could probably fit the ship. And then you have a second idea that you read about in the book, and that's this thing is a functioning sailing boat and can be parked literally on the water somewhere. You found a good spot. And thinking about it, there's a couple of very like hidden coves uh, on the Verdant Bay itself. I'll relay that. Just be like, I vote parking it in a cove. It's less suspicious that way. Works for yeah. me. And the rest That's you kind of think, idea. like, there's, there's nothing necessarily, like, if this thing is sitting at, there's kind of a marked uh, mark on the outside of the ship where the water level would sit. It's very faint because this is primarily an airship, but because it can go, it's technically amphibious, there is a line where the water level would sit on this ship. And 
it's high enough on the ship that anything below the ship that would give it away as potentially not a normal boat would be completely hidden. And there's no identifying marks of, like at deck level that would indicate that this is anything other than just a standard sailing vessel. Perfect. There we go. All right. So with that, you guys head over and start slowly making your way over uh, the general area of the Redwood Forest towards the Verdant Bay Peninsula. Whoever would like to, I'm going to ask you to roll a D100. Oh, I'll do it. I was about to say, you probably don't want me doing it because I've been rolling nothing but threes today. Twelve. About an hour into the trip. Uh, Finn, you spot it first with your passive, then the others do with theirs, and then finally Rulo calls out, Captain! Looks like we've got a squall! I got that spyglass, too. You pull it out? Yep. All right. Literally at deck level with you guys, because you guys are so high up, you're technically like right below the cloud level, off of the starboard bow, so off to your right a little ways off the front, a massive black cloud is making its way uh, in a kind of west by southwest heading. And it looks like you guys, if you don't course correct and detour, are probably going to run right into that squall. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I'd say we, uh, uh, Rulo, we cut north or south? Captain, I'd recommend going to the north. South would put us right on the collision course with it. And the last thing we want is more. Works for me. All right. You cut it over to the north, trying to bypass the squall. I'm going to go ahead and need... We're not necessarily in combat, but this is not a ideal situation. So okay. I'm going to have you go ahead and roll an animal handling check. You do have advantage on this. And for the purposes of this, double your proficiency bonus. As you do have uh, expertise. Or if, there's, if you have a check built into your sheet. For yeah, it. I made one for the misty step. Okay. Then in that case, go uh, ahead and roll that. Uh, at said, and is that with advantage? All right. Yep. 26. Oof. Easily enough, you're able to course correct. Kind of gauging just there's just enough of an angle that you're able to spot where the squall is kind of heading. It does look like if you had kept going just straight that way or not course corrected as hard as you did, you would have still encountered it. But you're able to kind of bypass it and run almost parallel to the path that it seems to be taking at the moment. The wind picks up a little bit, uh, not uncomfortably so, but enough to kind of ruffle anyone's feathers if they were meditating out on the deck or anything like that. Um, but otherwise, it is still smooth sailing, and after about a couple of hours of avoiding the squall, getting a few raindrops uh, as it pushes just ever so farther west, you guys are clear of the storm and barely slowed down by the, the efforts of Mother Nature here. Good flying, Finn. You're welcome. So, an hour after that, the sky is clear just enough that you guys are able to make out something that for some of you is a little familiar uh, in uh, some way. Maybe not as familiar as it could be, but sitting in the base of a small valley where the Greenwater River and the Verdant Bay meet lays a city of soft pastel stone and luscious green treetops throughout the city, or throughout a city ringed by thick marble walls. A soft tune of distant lyres and soft singing carries on every gust of the wind near this valley, and the air feels almost permeated with magic and natural life, even this high up. While the city itself seems level with the tops of the walls, in the center lies a massive set of linked spires, overlooking the entire region from its heights. From their peaks, there's almost a light that seems to be kind of coloring and bending, almost like a rainbow, shooting straight into the sky uh, before disappearing just about your guys' eye level. Soaring gulls, even this far out, fly in lazy circles, heading towards the city itself, where you can see in the bay above, do- or they, these gulls fly do- above dozens of vessels moored in the various harbors, ranging from what look to be smaller merchant-class vessels to Massive, multi-decked pleasure galleys of high elven nobility. Welcome, Wolfpack, to Elvenon. Oh. 
We made it. Sweet. So, you guys are a couple miles out at this point. You're in kind of the area itself around here. Uh, the cloud cover is gone. There's a lot of open sky. While you might not necessarily be fully spotted, you're now at a point where if something was going to spot you, it would be starting now. So, how do you wish to proceed? Uh, Rulo kind of gives you a couple of options. You can either skirt way around them, uh, kind of running at the edges of this clear zone around Elvenon. It'll slow you guys down. You probably won't make it to where any of the coves that Tyler's thinking of before nightfall, but you might potentially you make it there unseen. You go that far around. The other option that he gives is to risk being a little daring and just going ever so higher up into kind of the hard area where area where it's hard to breathe, but it would be straightforward and you would not be seen. Uh, I'm cool taking the long way. I mean, we're not in a huge hurry, right? Yeah. Like swing around, wait yeah, till it's dark, like come in in the dark and hit the water. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. In that case, I'm going to have everybody roll a stealth check at advantage because you guys are taking the long way and it's going to be very hard to spot all of you. The DC on this is pretty low, so and it's a group check. So as long as most of you roll above the DC, you're fine. 21, that's a success. 10, success. 17, success. 15, success. And that is almost the entire group. 15, success. All successes. You guys skirt around the city, almost riding at like the edge of where any of the cloud cover would be, beyond going higher than you are. Um, not necessarily hiding in the clouds themselves, because you don't want to compromise your visibility seeing things out. But just close enough that if anything, I mean, at this distance, you're not going to get spotted. You're clearly skirting the place in a way that's safe for everyone involved. Night eventually falls by the time you have crossed over the Greenwater River. And in keeping circling the entirety of Elvenon, you do eventually come to an area that it's looks to be a very green and forested area with a couple of hills every once in a while uh, scattered over. Terrain that even from this high up looks very familiar to two of your party before it suddenly ends in a cliff and there's nothing but greenish blue water for miles in most directions as you are now over the Verdant Bay. You begin your descent, taking it down, following the instructions. Uh, this is your first water landing, so this is going to be another really low DC check. Go ahead and roll another one, Finn, at advantage. Okay. And for this one, uh, your bosun is actually giving Ooh. There we go. Your bosun was going to lower the DC, so the hey. DC was only Damn. 12. Not that you fucking needed it. So, Damn. nope. Like a duck to fucking water, you gently set this thing down. There's not even a splash as the ship has been converted into aquatic mode, sitting right where it would need to be to hide any goodies down below. You guys have already taken the time. Finn had the foresight to do this because no one specifically mentioned it, but the gun in the, uh, the ventral gun, the one that shoots straight down, he had the foresight before you guys went down to have uh, anyone on the gun deck lift the gun up and seal that port shut, preventing any uh, unnecessary flooding into the gun compartment. So, oh. but the ship is waterborne, and it's at this point the deckhand and the bosun kind of really help you out here. The ship still has like a general autopilot feature, even on the water, but there's a little more maneuvering that has to be done uh, now that it's not relying entirely on the magical parts, you know, that keep it mm -hmm. essentially afloat. So, but you have crew, and that eliminates the need for any real dangerous uh, maneuvers, like sailing a fucking ship that you've never sailed before. <laughs> so, with that, you're able to find one of the coves that, because she rolled a natural 20, she knows exactly where the fuck it is. You find a hidden cove just up where that line meets the green. So I'll do it again right there. Okay. And nice. looking at the map, uh, based on what you guys know about uh, the terrain, because two of you, again, very familiar. This is, I don't know, uh, Taylor, what, what you took as your actual like favorite terrain. If it's not forest, 
you have, I'm going to say you have favorite terrain, like all the benefits of favorite terrain for being in this forest specifically. I don't remember what I have if I even have that. If you didn't take it, I'm still going to say you have it because this is, a, this is a place that you want very familiar. Uh, you and your dad spent a good amount of time out here training and your sister and your mother also spent a good amount of time training out here. Different uh, training, natural, obviously, but forest and grassland. There you go. Well, uh, whatever benefits it gives you, double them for this, because this is your home turf at this point. Ooh. And in fact, it's home enough turf. It's enough home turf that you both know where you guys landed and are kind of birthing the ship. You're about five miles from your home. Where neither of you have actually been in quite some time. But night has fallen at this point. You are still on the ship, but you have the ability to get off the ship and go on to land should you choose to. Wolfpack, we're going to take a quick break, and then you guys are going to figure out what exactly you're doing moving forward here. Okie dokie. Oh, Perfect. Right. Ready. Works for me. See you, see you in 5 to 10. Cool. cool. Be me. <clears throat>
Yo. Welcome back. Yeah. Yo. Welcome back. I am back. Welcome back. Hello. Okay, I saw people talking. Is everyone back? I believe most of us are. I think so. Yeah. Yep. I'm the only one who isn't yet. It's very quiet. We need music. Or at least yeah. sounds. I had some. Apparently, I stopped. Oh, I think I knew one. I showed a friend of mine how to actually operate Roll20 with a screen share. Stopped it. Ah, that's fair. Because for some reason, even though I have it muted on mine, it was playing through Discord. Hmm. I think I see Kendall is not muted anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hate to do this to you guys, but we're going to go ahead and cut it short there. I really do not feel great. Uh, <laughs> and I got really lightheaded just standing up to go get a drink of water. So Ooh. I need to call okay. it there. Yeah. yeah. You're good, no, man. No, yeah, feel better, man. Yeah, yeah, feel better. Yeah. Fucking Florida. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Taylor heard uh, it. God damn it, Florida. Said, when you mentioned that you were thought you had covid so yeah i oh. no it's not it's not feeling great so go ahead and cut the recording there i will do that so thank you guys for watching yep. and we'll catch you next time sorry it was a short session have a good night